previously on the Rod Peterson Show. If you were forced to give up an item, let's just say Connor Mc... No, O.V. scores his... Uh, what's the record for goals? 871. See, I think it is. Wayne's. Say he scores 872 and against the opposition. And let's say Shesterkin. Let's say it's in New York and he fires the puck into the crowd, the goalie for the Rangers. And you catch it. And then the Capitals come over to you and tap on the glass. Can we get that puck? It's always it's the record-breaking goal. A, you don't want to give it to him. But B, you know you should. What would be an appropriate... But C, that's a million-dollar puck right. in your hand. They say the football's a half million. Okay. That's so, what they're saying. So the puck would be... This didn't break a record. The puck would be right there. No, what would you want? A half a million dollars. You scumbag! <laughs> I, that's the, that'd be the coolest thing to have the record-breaking puck. But you know what? Oh, it's 894. Sorry. So if it's 895, you catch the puck for 895. Because what Tom said was, oh, we'll get him a helmet, maybe a couple jerseys or something. Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm not quite like you. Yeah. I'm not a complete pimp like you. I would say, <laughs> I want the helmet. I want the jerseys. I want season tickets. I want lunch with you at the Golden Corral tomorrow, Tom. <laughs> And let me think about it a little longer, and then yeah. I'll get back to you. Get ready for the Rod Peterson Show. Somebody got a fly swatter? Uh, it was a shot of Prairie Jesus is really what it was. It was. You'd think we, we'd be getting used to it, but it would, we, we never get used to it. We never get tired of good things happen. This life doesn't get old. No. It was a nice little distraction from the real world, and here we are today for a coffee session. This is the Rod Peterson Show. Hey, how about that? Something just rained down on me. I just realized something. We were using the term, hey, Clark, Prairie Jesus, before... Uh, Cody Fajardo was ever using the term sprinkle of Jesus, right? We were. We had it first. Yeah, let's trademark it. Shout out WQEE, Ryan O Radio. Uh, they're all, I was just listening to you, Ryan. Very uh, interesting pair they have on the radio down there in Noonan, Georgia, 99.1 FM. Speaking of an interesting pair, let's bring in the Moose. Darren Moose DuPont from the NHL's Bermuda Triangle. What are you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are, actually. What makes you say you're not a pimp? It was in our, if you were watching the opening uh, three-minute clip, you were talking about the Tom Brady football, and you said, I'm not a pimp like you are, or something like that anyways. Kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, he's got a sign for our radio listeners that had no idea. Uh, scru uh, scruffy. Moose just Whoa. held up a sign that said, <laughs> I know, said, I walk off the pimp. set. Well, we're, we're off to a great start. <laughs> Uh, I'll get to everybody's hellos. Thank you. <clears throat> I just wanted to send out the first one to Ryan in Metro Atlanta. I uh, love that guy. Coming up on the program today, a really big day. The newest Jacksonville Jaguars quarterback, Nathan Rourke, as we hurdle our way towards the NFL Divisional Playoffs this weekend. Nathan Rourke will be joining us, formerly of the BC Lions. Uh, Tara Sloan. Tara Sloan. I always get her. It's only been, I've been watching her for a decade. You'd think I'd get her right. <laughs> Tara Sloan from the San Jose Sharks will be joining us. A lot of folks will know her name from Rogers Hometown Hockey, national television every Sunday night, but she's now with the San Jose Sharks. And Jeff Reinbold to preview the uh, NFL playoff games this weekend, the peerless uh, assistant coach and former head coach of pretty much every league imaginable. He'll join us from Sky Sports. Can we hit the quick six show horn, please, Director Jordan? <laughs> Um, 
Nathan Rourke is coming in next segment, so we got to get through a lot of stuff here with Moose Fast. Uh, number one, we're opening with NHL leftovers. Couple of games from last night. Steven Stamkos made history in quite the fashion. He opened a 5 2 Tampa Bay Lightning win over the Vancouver Canucks with his 500th career goal and finished with a hat trick. He's the third active skater to score 500 goals following Washington's Alex Ovechkin and Pittsburgh's Sidney Crosby. We've talked about this before. One of my favorite hockey paintings of all time. We actually, Clark called it up a while back, of all the 500 goal scorers in NHL history. It's an elite group, an elite club. They're going to have to add now Stammer, my good friend from the Tampa Bay Lightning, to that painting with all our friends, Marcel Dion, Lanny McDonald, Wayne, Mario. It's awesome. But in Calgary, our Terry Lekkinen and Miko Rantanen scored two goals each to lead the Colorado Avalanche to a 4-1 victory over the Calgary Flames. Nathan McKinnon had a pair of assists for Colorado to extend his point streak to six. Tyler Toffoli scored the lone goal for Calgary. They've suffered back-to-back -back losses. So we're going to roll a lot of things into one topic here right now. Um, I watched the game. It's hand-wringing. The Flames were down 3 nothing halfway through the first period. When you have goaltending like that, Four goals allowed on, I was it 13 shots, 15, whatever, less than 20 shots. It doesn't give you a chance. And I see what Daryl Sutter's doing. He's, and the general manager, Brad Tree Living of the Calgary Flames, are trying to stick with their guy. They're giving him $6 million, roughly. Jacob Markstrom, the starting goalie, trying to get him to f play his way out of this. I like all of that. But at what point, Darren, do you say enough's enough and make a move? So I'll bring in our second point, which is the poll question today for Capital Auto Mall Universal Collision Center. Capital has dealerships all across the Canadian prairies and the state of California, including San Jose. How long do you wait? Or what do you do? Here's your options. Stand pat, stay with Jacob Markstrom and Dan Vladar. Two, go out and sign somebody or trade some for somebody in advance of the deadline. Three, call up Dustin Wolf, your top prospect from the American Hockey League's Calgary Wranglers. He's the number one goalie by far in the minors or four other. And uh, the reaction I've been getting, Moose, to is Stan Pat. Basically, they're saying play Vladar. The fans have given up on Jacob Markstrom. Play the backup, Dan Vladar. Um, I guess I'm a proponent of sticking with your people. The Cowboys are doing it with Brett Maher, the kicker who missed four converts in the playoff game Monday night. So what would you do if you were the Calgary Flames? I would stick with Jacob Markstrom and Dan Vladar. I would stick with that combo and, <coughs> excuse me, try and ride the hot hand, you know, if you can. If it's not Markstrom, then you hope it's Vladar. Because you look at what Dustin Wolf's doing down in the minors, he is your future. He's only 21 years old. At all costs, yeah. you need to protect him, not rush him, and make sure he's your future because you're looking at him being a, a franchise goaltender for a decade, and that's your hope. Right now, the Flames are just hanging on to a playoff spot. It'd be different if you were sitting there at the top of the conference, your goaltender gets hurt, and you need somebody to plug and play to win a Stanley Cup. Right now, this Flames team doesn't look like a cup team, so I wouldn't be risking Dustin Wolf. We're going to move on fast, but that's the poll question today. What should the Flames do with their goalies? It's a conundrum, and their fans are concerned. Uh, you have small windows as a franchise, and they're in the window to win a Stanley Cup, right? And uh, the fans are very upset. A fun question here before we move on to deal or no deal NFL. This was on the uh, NHL Network last night. So I'm going to ask you, Darren, and the viewers, if you had your druthers, you could control where the lottery ball is going to drop for the number one overall pick of the NHL draft. Who would you like to see Connor Bedard go to number one overall? Because we've thought it. I will go first and say Arizona. But Chicago's been the 32nd team. Now it's Columbus. And I think if he goes to Columbus, we'll never hear of him, of him again. He'll drop off the face of the earth. I'd like to see him go to Arizona because I've predicted for three years he'll go to Arizona. They have not got out of that funk. Um, I'd like to see what he could do for hockey in the Valley of the Sun. Connor Bedard, I'm going to say Arizona. And as I've been preambling, you've been thinking, who would you like to see Connor Bedard go to? Number one overall in the NHL draft this June. Arizona for the exact same reasons. They've never had a star, mm. and they need one. And to see what that does to that, that market I think would be fantastic. But to give you an alternate, I would say Vancouver as a number two. A hockey market that's had a lot of bad luck. They've had some stars, though, but they've had bad luck. 
And wouldn't it be great to have a superstar to create a lot of attention on the West Coast, create a little more of a rivalry between, you know, Vancouver, Edmonton, and Toronto, each of those powers having superstars. That would be cool. That's his hometown that I'm not sure. The kid's very mature. He's been great at handling pressure. I'm not sure I would wish that on Connor Bedard. And with what's gone on with the Vancouver Canucks, I doubly don't think I would wish that on Connor Bedard. I get it. I get it. But I think he deserves better than what would be awaiting him there in Vancouver. So the viewers, the listeners, who would you like to see number one overall get Connor Bedard? I'm saying Arizona, so is Moose. Moving on, it's time. NFL deal or no deal, Moose. Uh, we're not asking you straight up picks for this weekend's NFL divisional games. It's going to be the spread brought to you by our exclusive betting partner, Bet Regal. So uh, let's go. It's a doubleheader on Saturday. Jacksonville Jaguars at the Kansas City Chiefs. The Chiefs are favored by 8.5. Deal or no deal? No deal. I like Jacksonville to keep that game close. They have some magic. I don't think they'll win, though. Okay. Later on that night, the New York Giants at the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles favored by 7.5 at the link. Deal or no deal? No deal. I No deal. I think Philadelphia will win. But again, another game I think will be close. I think the spread is too big for a game of this magnitude. Sunday, the Cincinnati Bengals at the Buffalo Bills. Cincinnati picked by Mo Egger yesterday to win the game, but they're not favored. The Bills favored by 5.5 at home. Deal or no deal? Jeez, I took a lot of favorites last week. No deal. I'm actually picking Cincinnati to win this game outright. Okay. And the Dallas Cowboys at the San Francisco 49ers to close out this divisional playoff weekend Sunday night. The Niners favored by four at Levi Stadium. Deal or no deal? Last week against Tampa really has me you know, curious about Dallas. But with the spread at four or four and a half, um, I'll take San Francisco. So you, you've got a deal there for me. Sign up today at betregal.ca and start playing tonight or for sure this weekend. We've got CFL stuff to get to, NBA, and some junior hockey stuff. But I want to ask you a question. Yeah, it's uh, Clark says we got a graphic to go to, so let's do it. <clears throat> regarding odds and so forth. This came from Bet Regal, and it's on all of our social media right now. These are their odds from their odds makers that they have in staff. They're all on the payroll working for Bet Regal, not like a lot of these betting companies that just use a software program. So you have a very good look. As a matter of fact, flip uh, Moose over. Maybe you can explain to the layman what these odds mean, and then I want to ask you something about sports betting, Darren. We have plenty of time here. And mindful of the fact that we are on the radio, so explain uh, what they're looking at. Yeah, so odds. you just see all the, the it's, it's the money line odds that we're looking at here. So you look at, at Kansas City at minus 440. They've got the greatest odds. Essentially, you know, that's, you know, bet 440 bucks to win 100, right? Not a great, great odds. Jacksonville at plus 365. You bet 100 to win 365 bucks. So, <laughs> excuse me, um, there's some good odds there on the money line. If you're a fan of the Bengals and think they can win, or if your boy Chris Sanford in New York thinks the Giants can win, you've got some pretty good odds at plus 194 and plus 291, respectively. So, going through the playoff uh, picture here, all the favorites, obviously, are favorites on the money line. But those two, New York and Cincy, have some pretty juicy odds if you want to go uh, after the underdog. Big thank you to our exclusive betting partner, Bet Regal, for providing those odds now. And good work on the camera, guys. And by the way, while you were talking, I just checked in on WQEE, and we're coming through loud and proud on the Blowtorch 99.1 WQEE Metro Atlanta. Good work, Ryan. My question to you, Moose, because I was watching the coverage this morning of ESPN, and later on I'll flip over to NFL Network and Fox. Because on Fridays, football Friday here, I'll give you my straight-up picks. Forget about the money line. I'll give you my straight-up picks for the game. We're sprinkling our love for the NFL playoffs through the entire week. Don't you like that? Yeah. When you're making your assessments, how do you go about it? Because, again, here's mine. I want to see what Marcus Spears is saying. I want to see what Shannon Sharp's saying. I want to see what Kurt Warner's saying. I want to see what Rob Ninkovich is saying and Dan Orlovsky. But I'm not going with what any of them say. Like last weekend, it was a feel 
for me. It was a feel. Came from the heavens above that I went six for six on the picks. Because if you'd gone by the numbers, I think, I think you'd have said the Buccaneers would win because Tom Brady had never lost to Dallas. He was 7-0, and and they were at home. Um, what do you use? I, I'm saying I go by the feel. Uh, and I do read the numbers, and I do watch the analysis, but in the end, I don't go by what anybody tells me to do. Yeah, I look at the, I look at the, the numbers. I, I go by feel a little bit, but really I look for trends. And so if I see, and I, and I look for value. So if I see a team that's trending up, but the betting public hasn't really caught up to that yet. You know, like Cincinnati, I think, is one of the best teams left. I think they're a real shot at a Super Bowl here. The betting public still is so high on Buffalo that they're undervaluing Cincy. So you can come in on Cincinnati and I think surprise people. So I look at that. I look at recency. I look at some of the numbers and I try not to uh, just do what everybody else is doing. Folks, if you're watching on YouTube, hit, uh, hit the like button, please. We're also live on Game Plus TV, WQEE Radio, and your favorite podcast platform. Moose telling me yesterday, we are up 100% podcast downloads from one year ago. Um, Clyde Carpenter's watching in the Maritimes, where we're very big in the Maritimes. Clyde says, good luck to Nathan Rourke going forward in his NFL career. I believe he can be a starter in the NFL, and Clyde says Philly and Buffalo in this year's Super Bowl. Regarding who you would like to see get Connor Bedard number one overall in the NHL draft, Wayne in Victoria, B.C. says that would be great if the Canucks get Connor Bedard, but of course I'm prejudiced. LOL. Yes, he is uh, one of the resident Vancouver fans. Allie in Texarkana says I would be shocked if Arizona doesn't get him. Uh, this is the one thing somebody said, wrote in a while back and said, a lottery ball will determine it. Yeah, thanks, tips. But what they don't understand is it depends on if you're the 32nd team, the 31st team, the 30th team, the 29th team, based on standings, you get more balls in the bin than those that finished ahead of you. Correct, Darren? So yeah. at, su at some point, these teams are going to start tanking. I just wonder when that's going to be. I, yeah, I would have thought it would have happened by now, and I, and I think it's got to happen soon. Yeah. You know, we'll see what happens at the trade deadline, but teams want to start putting more lottery balls in the bin and give them the best chance possible at Connor Bedard yeah. because this is, this is Ovechkin, this is Crosby, this is Connor McDavid. This, these guys don't come around every year. This isn't Alex Lafreniere or Shane Wright or, you know, Uri Slavkovsky, and those are all good players, but this is not that. This is generational. Yeah, <clears throat> and that's what I'm trying to say is that if you are the 28th finishing team, you don't just get one ball and the 32nd place team gets one ball. No, the 32nd place team's 32nd place team gets way more balls. Ba 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 ba. I know it's a little complicated, but stick with us. Uh, from JT says, sadly Columbus will get Connor Bedard. As I said, if the Blue Jackets get him, we'll never hear from him again. Uh, 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 Andrew Stout says, I would love to get Bedard, but it's not looking good for my Habs. Yeah, they keep winning. <laughs> stop winning, Montreal. Stop trying. Nobody else is. Columbus clearly is not. They got the memo. Do we have Nathan Rourke lined up, Clark? Okay, Doke. Well, hey, Moose, stick by your uh, phone. I we'll will. We'll see if we got him next. We uh, will be back in a moment. We're halfway through the Quick Six Show topics. T Tara Sloan and Jeff Reinbold on the way, too. It's the RP Show, Game Plus Television, YouTube Live, and WQEE 99.1 FM. Head to YouTube.com slash The Rod Peterson Show now. You got to subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed.
Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. to trade and upgrade at Capital Ford Lincoln. Great news, factory credits are back. That means massive savings on every new vehicle. Take advantage of up to $7,000 in discounts on all remaining new 2022 F-150s. And rates are as low as 1.99% OAC. Looking for a used vehicle? You gotta check out our all makes, all models inventory. Plus, don't pay for 90 days on all new and used vehicles. There's never been a better time to trade and upgrade at Capital Ford Lincoln. CapitalFordLincoln.com. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Hey, honey, can you get one of the kids to show me how this Twitter thing works? Honey, I need to get on Instagram. Time for more of the Rod Peterson Show. Hey, everybody, welcome back to your favorite daytime sports talk show. And by the way, I got this note, Ryan O'Radio. I saw you. I saw you post it. How about this lineup on WQEE? All right. 12 to 2 Eastern, the Rod Peterson Show, immediately followed by the sports beat with Richard Holdridge, and then at 3 p.m., 3 till 5, Braves country with Mac McGee and the armchair quarterbacks. I put that sports talk lineup up against anybody in the country. So thank you, Ryan, for making us a part of it. And uh, I'm happy to bat lead off. By the way, Nathan Rourke's Wikipedia has already been updated. How about this kid, 24 years of age from Victoria, British Columbia, 6'2", 210. Played at Fort Scott College before Ohio. Spent 2021-22 with the BC Lions after being drafted in the second round, 15th overall in the 2020 draft. Now of the Jacksonville Jaguars. CFL Most Outstanding Canadian, two-time John Cornish Award winner for the top Canadian in NCAA football, two-time second team All-Mac Conference. And he joins us today from the West Coast, the newest Jacksonville Jaguar. Good day, Nathan. I'll say congratulations again, man. How are you feeling? Is it, has it sunk in yet? Yeah, uh, not yet. Uh, it definitely feels surreal <laughs> still. And I'm um, looking forward to getting down there as quickly as possible and getting started and, um, and getting after it. So uh, I appreciate you having me on. Always good to talk. Oh, yeah, I was, I was so happy when you said that you were willing to come on. And I'm going to try to ask you some questions that you might have not already been asked in this whirlwind tour of interviews you've done since your whirlwind tour of teams, 12 of them in the NFL. What, how did they differ from workout to workout to workout? I'm sure some were short, some were long. How, how did they go? Yeah, we're, you're, you're exactly right. Um, some are shorter than others. Um, the, you know, the actual workouts themselves were pretty similar in terms of the routes, the um, the drops, the things that they wanted you to see, you know, with some variations. Some of them were, um, they wanted me to do some more movement stuff. Some of them I did a little bit more of individual work, pocket movement, uh, so forth. And um, But the actual day, um, in terms of how they were getting us from, you know, each place was different. Uh, if they were giving us, food or meal vouchers or 
um, how they're getting us from the airport and all that different stuff, the, the offices, the, the physical and medical offices, um, that all stuff was very different, very different to team to team. The facilities were different. Um, that was the, one of the most fun things for me was being able to see each team set up and uh, meet people inside the building and uh, definitely a, a, a good discrepancy between each team. Um, and you could tell kind of who were investing in this, you know, their workout players and trying to get players from this process and uh, some who, you know, were less, less invested in that. So that was cool. You know, what's also cool is because um, I've read all the interviews and I've watched them and you obviously talked to Bo and I think you've talked to Hank. Who gave you the advice, I assume somebody did, to enjoy it, to relax and enjoy this whole process? Somebody must have, unless you knew to do that, because it sounds like you did. Yeah, um, I think uh, I think Rick Campbell was one of the ones who gave me that advice. He said, you know, to enjoy the process. And, um, you know, I, I certainly felt like, uh, you know, that was, um, I, think that, I think that's good advice. I think when you think about the workout process in itself with the amount of people that are watching you each workout and there's it's tough sometimes because you're throwing to receivers that you've never you know even met before and uh, you, you just met them that morning and um, so there's a lot of pressure but I think that it's good advice because um, the more fun you have I think that the, the better they see you they can see that you're having fun out there they see how you lead um, in that short amount of time that you have on the field and um, I think it just you know, boats better for the entire experience in general. Sure. Well, these guys, the personnel guys, the coaches, they can tell. I don't know how they can tell, but they can tell in less than five minutes they know. And obviously um, there were teams that they were impressed, uh, all of them. So let me ask you, I saw some of your quotes on why you chose Jacksonville, but you know, I was just there a couple weeks ago, man. That is a team on the rise with mm -hmm. a very positive vibe. Did that play into your decision? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I think you see, you see the improvement um, from last year team that was three and fourteen, and um, and all the, the stories that were coming out of that uh, that organization. And then you 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 see the change this year. Um, obviously, winning the division and winning a playoff game. I think that stems from you know the leadership there. Um, it starts in the front office and it, and it extends down to, to Coach Peterson and. Um, and the rest of his assistants. And I just, you know, I went for my uh, workout there. I, I'm talking to scouting assistants, and um, they're just talking about how, you know, they're the lowest, you know, totem pole in terms of the organization. They've been there for six months, some of them, and um, and, and they're feeling like they're valued in that organization. And I think that's a good tell to kind of see where an organization's priorities are um, and how they're going to treat people who are coming in, like myself, rookies, undrafted guys who are who are coming in um i think that's a good good indication of regardless of you know who you are they're going to treat you well and so definitely part of it um and uh i definitely see that um you know even in that in that last playoff game against the chargers um i didn't feel like um i felt like they were hurting themselves more than anything and and so i, f I feel like a very good offense obviously um and some a really good defense and, and good special teams and you could tell, I think, in that game that they were very cohesive as a unit. No one was panicking. Um, and again, a sign of a good locker room and good leadership, uh, if that's the case. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Coach Peterson, Henry's a very close friend of mine since you were in elementary school. They got chips on their shoulders, man. And and I like that. Um, I'll ask you a few questions in a minute, but there's the viewers have some for you, if you don't mind. From my guy, Kevin in Airdrie, he's a... Probably the biggest BZ Lions fan I know. He says, Nathan, what will you take away from your time in the CFL? Yeah, it was um, a unique opportunity for me to learn how to be a pro before, you know, getting down to the NFL. I think that was, um, a, you know, a unique thing for me. And I, I was able to have the chance to learn behind veterans like Michael Riley and, and Brian Burnham, who I was able to see their routine and how they – uh, how they pre prepared each week for an opponent and um, their process. And I was able to kind of see that in action and see it work. And then, you know, in 22, really find my own way of doing things and uh, based off of what I saw and um, really understanding what that is, I think is going to give me an edge rather, rather than, um, you know, rookies coming in to the NFL for the first time, coming straight from college and 
So I really had that time to really develop there and, and grow and, and deal with, you know, the spotlight a little bit. You know, it was, it was a little bit more than what I was used to at Ohio. And um, and I think those are all things that are, are challenging, you know, going on, um, you know, having some success early, you know, certainly added to a little bit of the pressure. And I think that that's just going to um, intensify uh, if I ever get into a starting position down, um, down south. So, um all those things are things that I've learned and we're, we're, I'm really thankful for the opportunity that the Lions gave me to experience those things. Yeah, well, I also know you're a man of God and so you would know all those things happen to prepare you for now and it's kind of a thrill a minute to think about what's next, but it's nothing you can't handle. Arlen Bruce uh, the third is watching. I don't know if you know AB, BC Lions, great, mm -hmm. great cup champion. Yeah. 2011 says, congratulations, 12. Follow your plan. Be great. Uh, from Monty, says, Nathan, you are a great quarterback in the CFL. Wish you the best of luck in the NFL. From Monty, BW says, have fun storming the NFL castle. That's from BW. Jack in Vulcan, Alberta, says, I love this young man. Jake in Calgary area says, thank you, Nathan, for the season with the Lions, and you've made me a Jags fan. Go get it, sir. Uh, what's, what's your family's reaction been to this, by the way? They've been running out, and I enjoyed seeing your parents on TV in the games. They got all the Jags gear now? Yeah, well, I mean, what's funny about that is that my, my younger brother, Curtis, has been a Jacksonville Jaguars fan for a very, very long time, years. And so he's got, like, the bed spreads and the, his room was painted like not in this house but his, when we were growing up he had his room painted in their colors and he was a huge Maurice Jones true fan um, and uh, so he's been following the team for years so it's kind of ironic that um, that uh, this is the team that I, I, I got the chance with so um, I think he's ecstatic I think that the uh, the family is a little disappointed I think they had a pretty good uh, setup here in BC to be able to come to the games and I think they really mm -hmm. enjoyed that um, which is something that was, again, special about playing for the Lions. Um, but uh, they've been so supportive in my uh, football career and, and my uh, my dedication to the dream of playing in the NFL. And so they're just uh, very, uh, very happy for me, and uh, they're looking forward to seeing what comes next. Well, for sure, absolutely, everybody is. From Cooper Campbell, he's watching in Mississippi. Wishing you the best, Nathan. Really believe the sky is the limit for you. Your quarterback motion videos were quite impressive. While I have you, because I don't know when I'm going to talk to you again, it might be live in Jacksonville next year, but Oakville or Victoria? Victoria or Oakville? I never, ever did settle on which is which. Are you okay with both? Yeah, sure. I think that uh, the difference <laughs> there is that Victoria is on my passport or my birth certificate. And Oakville is where I actually grew up. So, um, I'll, I'll, I mean, I think Mr. Doman was pretty adamant that I say Victoria, but I think the truth is, is that uh, <laughs> partial to both. So, yeah, well, all year long, I didn't know which it was. And I thought it was kind of cute that both cities were like arguing over you, which uh, <laughs> would be a very good position to be in if it was you. By the way, speaking of that, and because I called games for the Rough Riders at BC Place when there was 55,000 for playoff games. Shoot, regular season games there was. What was it like when they, this playoff, when they opened up the upper deck and you were into the 40,000? What, what was it like? Yeah, really fun environment. Um, something about BC Place, I think it's, you know, because it's an indoor, the, the sound just kind of stays in there, as you as you probably know. And, and it, uh, it it's a pretty cool thing I, i've played in uh in when i was in college i played in away stadiums that were you know around that size but i've never played in an environment where those are your fans and they're cheering for you and um and it was special for me as well because it was my first game back playing and um obviously another you know, playoff game so you feel that environment and against a very good team in the calgary stampeders and um, it was just it was cool to be a part of those those games where you know even people who had played in that. I remember our, our, our O-line coach, Kelly Bates, who had played um, in the early 2000s for the Lions, um, you know, and he remembers those days where they were getting that type of crowd on a daily basis or on a regular season basis. Um, and he, he, he said, you know, he said this was special and we're getting back to that. And, uh, uh, you know, when you get that feeling that you're, you know, trending upwards and all that kind of stuff that, and you're a part of that, uh, that's really special. So again, hats off to the fans uh, for continuing to to come and and for Mr. Doman and his team for for making it really a, a spectacle and a, a cool 
game day environment uh, for the fans, and hopefully I can continue this this next up, up, up and coming season. For sure, it was uh, fun to watch. John Ohm, Ohm in Winnipeg says, "Good luck, young man. Wishing you all the best. Proud fan uh, from viewer Bill Johnson. He says he's a great guy." Uh, so, yeah, you got a lot of friends as you uh, depart, Nathan. I got a million more questions, but I'm going to let you go and go do your thing. Just say uh, congrats again. Continued good luck. Can't wait to watch you uh, in Duval County. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks again for having me. Thanks for the time, Nathan. Uh, the great Nathan Rourke, most outstanding Canadian in the CFL in 2022. Do we have time for a sports update, Clark, or should I adjourn for Tara? Bingo! What's the deal? Okay, we'll be back. I'll save that for a little later on, the sports update. Uh, thanks so much to Nathan Work, and we're going to stay on the West Coast. Tara Sloan joins us next from the San Jose Sharks. It's the RP Show on the Game Plus Television Network, available all across BC and Alberta on TELUS Channel 924 Television. We're also live streaming on YouTube and on the radio, WQEE 99.1 FM. Head to YouTube.com slash The Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Is it time to take your event online? Bring it to IKS Live. We've got a fully customized virtual event platform with remote guest support for your next fundraiser, talk show, conference, performance, and more. IKS Live offers live streaming to Facebook Live and YouTube and pre-recorded capabilities, both in our studio with green screen available and on location with pre-production and post-production services. Visit us at ikslive.ca. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC. Great news, factory credits are back. That means massive savings on every new vehicle. We have over 100 GMC Sierras available, and they're all priced to move. Looking for a used vehicle? You've got to check out our all-makes, all-models, GM-certified pre-owned inventory. Plus, don't pay for 90 days on all new and used vehicles. There's never been a better time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC. CapitalGMC.ca Easy snacking all around. something everyone can love. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. Always delivering the best fan experience. I gotta hit the beat. I gotta hit the beat. I gotta hit the Dark Horse Bets today. Beat. I gotta hit the beat. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Business owners and marketers. 
Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with the Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show. Did you know you can catch all the best moments from the show on all our social media platforms? Now back to the studio with Rod. Hey, everybody. Coming in hot into this next segment, everybody's talking about the Nathan Rourke interview. We got the biggest names. Thank you, producer Clark, for uh, for all that you do. The best guest booker in the business. Because I'll get to the Nathan Rourke comments in a moment. We're keeping the train going. Tara Sloan joins us now from San Jose. You all know her. National name. And I'm looking at her Twitter. Host slash contributor, San Jose Sharks, NBC Sharks, top of her game. Very popular initiative there, hometown hockey. Tara, welcome to the RP show again. How you doing? Hey. Thank you for having me. I was wondering if I was going to be ostracized from all things Canadian now that I've <laughs> relocated south of the border. So I'm glad to be here. Well, we are broadcasting from South Florida, so I get it. Clark actually brought that uh -huh. up this morning. But I will ask you this. Have you stopped smiling since landing in San Jose? It's been several months, Tara. I've been here for almost six months, and I was finally able yeah. to start working a couple of months ago. I was waiting on the visa. Anybody who's gone through this process knows it's incredibly stressful, So, um, but was lucky enough to have uh, some things lined up in the summer. Uh, I'm Actually, I'm really happy. I mean, the one thing I'll say, uh, if anybody's been paying attention to the weather, uh, California has had a, an unbelievable amount of, of rain. It's been very destructive, actually. So that part has not um, come, you know, as promised. But hopefully we have sunny days ahead. And I have a, I mm. do a bunch of different jobs that I love. I work for the Sharks. I've got a podcast. I do video content for them. And I'm hosting and reporting on NBC Sharks. And it's great. Uh, I know. Well, we're all following you. We've always been following you. <laughs> come over here to Boca Raton or come on when the Sharks make a roadie. It's 28 Celsius, 82 Fahrenheit here today. Um, but I want to ask you this. I know it's awesome. Um, nice. What's this job been like for you following the team? Because if I may, this would mm -hmm. be new for you from what you've done in this broadcasting business. Yeah, it uh, obviously it's it's an adjustment. I mean, you know, I've never been allowed to align with a team. I remember uh, I grew up a fan of the Montreal Canadiens and I remember somebody got really? me Really? Uh, yeah, then somebody got me a Montreal Canadiens iPhone case and I remember watch uh, walking into our studio with it and Ron just looked at me. He's like, "You can't have that." Um and that was those were early days. So, you know, it's it's neat to be able to align with a team. Um, it's fun to, to do different stuff. I honestly never saw myself doing rinkside. Um, and so I sort of have the best of all worlds because I'm not doing the player interviews, which are sometimes the most challenging part, you know, to extract mm -hmm. anything. Um, but I get to inject my storytelling sensibilities into the game from the arena, which has a very different energy than, than being in the studio. Being in the studio was great on hometown hockey. That had its own vibrancy, um, but there's nothing like being in the rink. And you know, even though the team is going through a rough patch, um, it's still been a lot of fun. And so I've got that. I'll be filling in in studio sometimes. And then for the sharks themselves, it's you know, I just I have a bunch of of different duties, and that's what keeps it interesting. For sure. By the way, just another on the weather, if you don't mind. Jake in Airdrie, Alberta says, do you still use Celsius when you're down there or have you converted to Fahrenheit? <laughs> it's I'm so not there yet. No, I'm Celsius. <laughs> um, I'm I think I'm in miles already. But yes, the conversion I haven't mastered. I know there's a really easy formula where you like something add 32 um, but I can't conceptualize it. If somebody says it's 65, I don't really get what that means. I suppose I'll get there. 
Yeah, yeah, you'll get there. You will absolutely. <laughs> and it'll be a fun ride getting there. Tell me something about the San Jose Sharks, if you don't mind, because I love those Seals jerseys. I love that. And I think Eric Carlson's a hell of a hockey player. Um, yeah. But I don't see them a lot. So tell me about the Sharks. Well, uh, you know, it's nobody wants to call it a rebuild, but it's a whole new cast of characters, you know, from the top down. So this is Mike Greer's first year as GM. Um, you know, he's a really quiet guy. I interviewed him last week and, you know, he's he's quite shy. Um, but obviously, you know, has a lot of great ideas and knows how he wants this team to be built. I think for him, work ethic is paramount. And you can see that in, in some of the people that he's brought in um, since, you know, since he came um, from his staff, but also uh, in terms of some of the players on the ice, uh, players like Nico Sturm, who are just absolute workhorses. So I know, you know, when ultimately he is able to put together the the puzzle pieces and the building blocks to make this team a Mike Greer team, I think that is going to be one of the prime characteristics. But obviously, you know, this is a team that hasn't made the playoffs in, in a lot of years, um, is really struggling to get a win. Last night, it was great to see a comeback win uh, against Dallas, but they have been few and far between. So it's just an interesting kind of time because you have these players that are having career seasons like Eric Carlson, like Timo Meyer, who's leading the team in goals. Um, but who's going to be here come trade deadline? Who's going to be here in the summer? What's this team going to look like next year? And so you just have to trust the process you know as frustrating as it is i think for fans to have a, a losing record you have to trust that this does take time and mike has a has a vision uh ally in texarkana says they beat the stars last night which you did just mention a comeback win uh from andrew from montreal he says tara was born in my home city of montreal that would explain the habs <laughs> phone yes. case um my, my last one for you i think we have two minutes i have mm -hmm. never been to the bay area i've been just about everywhere but i have <laughs> not been there so what how is it as a hockey market you know what it's great i mean the sharks you know they came in in 91 and it didn't take long before they started to win and this is uh this is a fan base that's actually been pretty spoiled with uh this kind of winning legacy so it's hard for them now and and you know sometimes the games aren't as well attended as they once were so um but the fans here are real fans and what i like to see is you know, the fan base looks a lot different than it does in Canada because it's a newer market, because it's a different demographic. So it's a very diverse fan base. And, you know, for me working with this organization, I know that they are really dedicated to continuing to grow this game in a way that I feel aligned with. Um, so it's it's a great arena. And I'll tell you, when you're at the tank and it's, you know, the team is doing well, it's one of the loudest you've ever been to. Good. Well, uh, I hope that they get back there sooner than later. Uh, and, and bringing you in was a wonderful move, uh, kind of a tell towards what they want to do. So, Tara, we're very happy for you. Good things happen to good people. So keep up the great work. We're following closely. And go Sharks. Thanks for the time. Hey, thanks so much for having me. All right. San Jose Sharks contributor from SanJoseSharks.com and NBC San Jose. Tara Sloan. We'll be right back with a sports update. Viewer takeover. Jeff Reinbold at hour two talking NFL divisional playoffs. It's the RP show on Game Plus TV. YouTube Live, your favorite podcast platform and WQEE 99.1 FM. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to YouTube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now.
easy snacking all around. Something everyone can love. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC. Great news, factory credits are back. That means massive savings on every new vehicle. We have over 100 GMC Sierras available and they're all priced to move. Looking for a used vehicle? You have gotta check out our all makes, all models, GM certified pre-owned inventory. Plus, don't pay for 90 days on all new and used vehicles. There's never been a better time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC. CapitalGMC.ca. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Send us your opinions now. We won't victimize you unless you really deserve it. Now, back to your host, Rod Peterson. As promised, a very fun show today. Some big guests, viewer interaction, audience interaction, going back and forth with Ryan O Radio, WQEE in Metro Atlanta. Wow, what a daytime sports talk lineup that is. Before I get to the sports update, a couple of comments here. Jim Wagner's watching in Balgoni regarding our earlier interview with Nathan Rourke, Jacksonville Jaguars quarterback, formerly the BC Lions. Jim says, Nathan is a great man. I wish him all the best. I think we all do. And I think anybody that wants him to stay small and in the CFL, I hopefully they have come to their senses. Sean Kay is uh, following the program in Vancouver, British Columbia. And he says, holy smokes, is Moose watching the tennis right now? Andy Murray's in an absolute barn burner. Well, Sean, we're going to have to take your word for that. We're almost a tennis-free zone. Regarding where you'd like to see Connor Bedard end up in the NHL, I said Arizona. Moose said Arizona. Corey checking in from Radville says that hockey team needs to be gone out of Arizona, so nothing will help that place. It's embarrassing, Rod. Have you ever been there, or are you just shooting your mouth off? Have you ever been there, or are you shooting your mouth off? We'll talk about that next hour. To the audience, where would you like to see Connor Bedard go number one overall? Patrolman Pete in Winnipeg says San Jose seems like a no man's land for hockey. Hard to imagine that the team wouldn't be better off up the road in San Francisco or Oakland. At least move the AHL team up there. Again, have you been? A lot of opinions from folks here today. I wonder how much they know. Sports update is promised. 
will start in the dub. Carson Lambos had two goals and one assist to help the league leading Winnipeg Heist to an 8 1 blowout win over the Prince Albert Raiders Wednesday night. In Saskatoon, Maximus Wanner, who is a Esteban Sass product, net of the game winning goal 45 seconds into overtime as the Moose Jaw Warriors defeated the hometown Blades 5 4. In Everett, Washington, Ben Hemmerling capped a two goal effort by scoring at 336 of overtime to lead the Silver Tips over the Lethbridge Hurricanes 4 3. In Calgary, Jackson Weeb had a two goal night. Prince George Cougars beat the Hitman 6 5. In Swift Current, Brandon Bohm scored the shootout winner and won in regulation as well to lead the Medicine Hat Tigers past Swift Current 5 4. And in Kennewick, Washington, Ethan Ernst capped the two goal effort with the game winner. At 13.54, the third, and the Tri-City Americans edged the Victoria Royals, Royals 5-4. We didn't forget about you, Ontario. In the O, Sudbury beat Niagara 6-4, and the Sioux Greyhounds knocked off Saginaw 6-3. Is that still the Saginaw Gears, Clark? What's the Saginaw team called? Remember the Saginaw Gears? Spirit. That's a good name. But in Slapshot, it was the Saginaw Gears. Da, 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 da. Five that? NFL teams, five NFL teams will play international games next season. The Buffalo Bills, Tennessee Titans, and Jacksonville Jaguars will play in London. The Kansas City Chiefs and New England Patriots will play in Germany. And the Bills and Titans are the designated home teams for two games at the Tottenheim Hotspur Stadium. Well, the Jaguars will host a game at Wembley Stadium. The league announced the plans on Wednesday. How about that? How about that? Nathan Rourke gets, Nathan Rourke gets to go to England, and he didn't even have to pay for it. Right on. <laughs> Did you know that Rick Reagan is from Boca Raton? Did you know that, Clark? He's from Hell right here. Yes. Oh, you did? Uh... Sports update is for Babylon in theaters now. Tell me if I should go in your local landmark cinemas. From Damien Chazelle, Babylon is an original epic set in 1920s Los Angeles led by Brad Pitt, Margot Robbie, and Diego Calva. Last minute of play in hour one. With an ensemble cast including Jovan Adepo, Lee June Lee, and Gene Smart, formerly of Designing Women. A tale of outsized ambition and outrageous excess. It traces the rise and fall of multiple characters during an era of unbridled decadence and depravity in early Hollywood. They're more deprived then than they are now? Or, sorry, depraved? Not deprived? I kind of wanted to go see that, and then John Ohm in Winnipeg um, said it was really weird, and now I'm rethinking it. You tell me. Moose next hour and Jeff Reinbold. We're going to go over the NFL. And tonight in the NHL, more Flames talk after this quick break on Game Plus and WQEE. Head to YouTube.com slash The Rod Peterson Show now. You got to subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed.
It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital Ford Lincoln. Great news. Factory credits are back. That means massive savings on every new vehicle. Take advantage of up to $7,000 in discounts on all remaining new 2022 F-150s. And rates are as low as 1.99% OAC. Looking for a used vehicle? You gotta check out our All Makes All Models inventory. Plus, don't pay for 90 days on all new and used vehicles. There's never been a better time to trade and upgrade at Capital Ford Lincoln. CapitalFordLincoln.com. Download Dark Horse Bets today. I gotta hit the beat. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes to our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Get a fly swatter? Yeehaw! Uh, the it was a shot of Prairie Jesus is really what it was. It was. You'd think we, we'd be getting used to it, but it would, we, we never get used to it. We never get tired of good things happen. This life doesn't get old. No. It was a nice little distraction from the real world, and here we are today for a coffee session. This is the Rod Peterson Show. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Hour 2 of the RP Show. However you're finding us, I'm glad that you are making us part of your day. Across all of Canada, on Game Plus Television, all 10 provinces, two territories, in the USA, in 31 states, on the radio, WQEE, Metro Atlanta, and, of course, live streaming on YouTube. Some things have come up today that I new would be popular topics as we welcome in Darren Moose Dupont and I'm sure he's got a lot to say because he's barely been on here today and he's only going to be on for one segment uh, here off the top how you doing Moose uh, good to see you my man um hey wasn't that hot what did, what did you think of the interviews with Nathan Rourke and Tara Sloan last hour wasn't that big time that was great it was awesome and I love you know getting both of them on Two complete can cover the, you know our top two sports, which is the NHL and the CFL. I guess our top two leagues, hockey and football, and and uh, to have them on, yeah, it was great. Good hour one. Uh, yeah, and so fun. What again? The teacher at the front of the class, or maybe the coach. This is where we really lean into audience participation. So, nine zero two five one eight thirty thirty three. The number to text us in studio. Certainly, if you're following along on YouTube, you can write in the comments stream there, or you can tweet at us, Facebook at us, whatever you want. Um, but two things. I've never been to the Bay Area, and if I had a free trip, I'd go San Francisco, Oakland, San Jose. But I'm not dying to go. I was interested to get Tara's take on how San Jose is a hockey town, and she said it was pretty good. I don't doubt it. They've had the team there for 30 years. 
Um, and they've had good teams. They've had bad time, teams. Right now they have a bad team. So she's like, hey, we're not selling out. She was pretty honest. That's Tara. But I'll ask you before we get to a little Bedard talk and stuff, where's the one place you could go that you haven't? You know, I took you to Nashville with our last job. I think it was the highlight of your life, wasn't it? Going yeah. to Music City and it was. Going to Titans games and hanging out with Terry Crisp right. and Jim McKenzie and going to Predators games. It was awesome. My bucket list, not bucket list, my last three cities that I wanted to go to were Chicago, New Orleans, and Jacksonville. And I knocked Jacksonville off the list a couple weeks ago. Spent New Year's Eve in Jacksonville. How nice does that sound? I'm not really interested in the Bay Area. Are you? Are they up there for you, San Jose? San I've Francisco, been there. Oakland? I've, be, I've been to the Bay Area, um, San Fran, um, and watched a football game in Oakland. So, but for me, if we're talking hockey to the three cities, I, you mentioned Chicago. That came off the board for me. And I think Chicago is a place I'd like to visit. I've never been to Manhattan, to New York, to MSG. And the other one I think would be really cool because of our ties to Calgary, I think Denver would be a really cool place to go and visit and watch a game and see that environment. Well, it takes all kinds to make the world go around. You cover those and I'll cover mine. I never figured out the allure to New York. And um, don't at me. Because you just sent me the audience analytics here in New York's in our top 10 cities for audience. New York City. I've been there multiple times, a couple times for vacation, once for work. And uh, I, 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 I don't get it. <laughs> People say, I like the energy. I like, I like the buzz, the vibe. You ever been to South Florida, bro? We got vibe. <laughs> we got there energy. Go. <laughs> we also got 82 degrees in late January. Uh, anyways, so there's that. They're really, and we're going to get to more football, just so you know, next segment. Jeff Reinbold, Sky Sports, that's like Europe's ESPN, will be with us. And the veteran championship football coach will be with us to break down this upcoming weekend's divisional games. But I find this quite interesting. Just, I pulled it out of the hat. I said to the audience, where would you like to see Connor Bedard go number one overall? Last night on the NHL Network, Mike Rupp and EJ Raddick had a long, long debate on this. That's kind of where I brought it up. And I thought that it would resonate with our viewers. Both you and I have said Arizona. People agree if he goes to Columbus, we'll never hear from him again. That's <laughs> where careers go to die. Um, but they're really bashing Arizona as a hockey market. And that, like, John Ohm in Winnipeg. Ohm, he says, Connor Bedard deserves better than Arizona. Um, Nicholas says, Bedard to Anaheim. McTavish, Zegras, and Bedard. Sizzle. Yeah, but you need to play defense and keep the puck out of your net, too. Terry Livermore in Calgary says, I've spent a lot of time in Phoenix. Been to many Yotes games. They don't deserve Bedard. Again, don't want to argue. I don't know about you, but I got a lot of plaudits written to me overnight saying, you handled that Ivan Provorov thing really well. I'm like, thank you. I've had a lot of experience with sticky situations and how to handle them. But I'll say this about Arizona. We used to host parties down there, Ryderville parties. Literally, thousands of people would come to Glendale, Arizona. I'd host it. I have photos. They don't even do it anymore. But whatever. I would sit with Coyotes fans, Phoenicians as they say, and they would say, hey, we get a bad rap here as hockey fans. The team sucked for ever. <laughs> if they had a decent team, they'd fill this place. And yet everybody wants to bash Arizona. I said yesterday, Darren, they can't even sell out Mullet Arena. They can't even sell out 5,000 a game. But again, the team's terrible. Mm-hmm. I don't I get it. The uh, Kevin bad. the medium. Kevin the medium. Kevin the medium says Bedard deserves Vancouver. That's a place that doesn't deserve Connor Bedard. But I, I, I'm sorry. Until I told you what I knew about Coyotes hockey fans, how did you feel about the desert as a hockey market? Yeah, I, I feel like it just hasn't really had a chance to really see what kind of market it can be. You know, because they haven't been treated to any really good hockey. Yeah, we had playoff teams and. 
they they went on one kind of run, won a playoff series or two, but um, they haven't had any star, real stars. I mean, Ronick was there for a bit. I mean, Kachuk at the at the end, um, but real franchise stars like a Connor Bedard would be good. I wonder what he would do in, in Columbus. You said we never hear from him again, and probably not. Like, we really don't hear from Line A and the Johnny Hockey, so maybe we wouldn't. But I think, you know, a market like that, that hasn't had success, that hasn't had a star, I think you put a Bedard in one of those markets, like an Arizona or a Columbus, and then you really get to see if it can be a hockey market. Chicago, they've had their great success recently. They've had their stars. I don't think they really deserve a Bedard necessarily that way. Anaheim's got excitement. They've recently won. So I'd like to see him go to a market that hasn't really won anything. San Jose is an interesting market. They've been good. And they had the Thorntons and the Burnses and the Marlows and the Couturers, but they've never gotten over the hump. So wouldn't Connor Bedard be exciting in San Jose? I'd like to see that too. Highly, highly anticipated night of the NHL draft lottery. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Kevin, Kevin, the medium says, I'm going to take you to Vancouver, Rod, and show you why that city is amazing. You think I haven't been there, bro? I've been there. CFL road trips, WHL road trips, holidaying. Almost eight years sober here, a week away from eight years sober. I remember showing up, getting a ride back to the hotel at 6 a.m. in a cop car team hotel didn't do anything wrong by the way just lost in downtown vancouver and these cops were like uh it was foggy it was very foggy darren couldn't even see the moon couldn't even see the top of the buildings and they said where are you staying and i said the hyatt they said we'll give you a ride home we what we've seen you circling here <laughs> i'm lost so, hey, beautiful town. I don't think that'll happen at Connor Bedard. That was uh, part of my misspent youth, but don't think I haven't spent a ton of time in Vancouver. Of course, he's from there for the love of Pete. Just saying the team, come on. The team, I'm not sure they're ever going to get their act together. I wouldn't wish that on Connor Bedard as it stands right now. By the way, a uh, nice segue, though, on hockey. And last point before we switch over here to some CFL stuff and maybe some NFL stuff. Poll question today for Capital Automall. And it was embarrassing, by the way, when I showed up on that cop car because two coaches, Ron Este and Alex Smith, were having breakfast. And they saw me get out of the back seat of the cop car. Morning, boys. <clears throat> they were just getting up, and I was just going to bed. Hello, Darren. Aren't you glad you didn't know me then? <laughs> the poll question today is what should the Calgary Flames do with their goaltending situation. They lost last night 4-1 to Colorado. The Avs scored an empty netter. I saw an interesting quote from Elias Lindholm after the game. Star Flames forward saying, uh, we played however many games it is, 46 games, and we haven't played a great game yet. That's concerning. They were down 3-0 halfway through the first period. Jacob Markstrom allowing three goals on, I think it was 14 shots. Um, here, here, your options are, should they stay with what they have, Markstrom and Dan Vladar, which at the end of the day, I think that's what they're going to do. Two, go out and get somebody, which we didn't mention last hour. Who are you going to get? Cam Talbot's like the only guy on the list of the top 20 guys approaching the trade deadline. Three, bring up Dustin Wolf from the American League because he's leading all, pretty much all categories. He's by far the best goalie in the Apple or other. And uh, the majority saying... Stan Pat. What did you say? I can't remember. Yeah, Stan Pat. Stick with the guys you have. That's where I've gone. Not to put Dustin Wolf in that situation. No, but they're a great team. I see. Yeah. Listen. This is a soliloquy for another day. But I said to you in the morning meeting, you saw, you could feel the steam and the stress coming off Rich Sutter yesterday when he analyzed this. And he didn't even work for him. Just his brother's the head coach and his twin brother's the scout for the Flames. But it's like, I get it. <sighs> the pressure, the pressure is insane. But that, that, that's not going to stop. You know, like I, I don't know. They say in Toronto, they blame the media and the pressure. Well, the Leafs haven't won since 1967. And I think that's all bunk. I really do. 
Do you? Like, if that was the case, the Yankees wouldn't have as many World Series as they have because of the pressure. I, I just think that's an excuse. I'm not saying I'm right. I just don't see how that could be a thing. I mean, pressure does play a factor. And when you have more pressure on you, some players can rise to it and others can crumble. And when there's less pressure and you're more relaxed, there's better chances of success. I get that. So if a team has more pressure on them night in and night out, they probably, you know, might not play that well consistently enough. But it's not the media's fault that the Leafs haven't won since 67. It's not. And for the Flames, yeah, there's pressure. And you think there's pressure now. After last night, Colorado's just two points back of you for a playoff spot. And the Avs have three games in hand. So... There's a ton of pressure on the Calgary Flames right now, and they need to lock down the goaltending spot right now and and score some goals at the other end. But, yeah, there's the pressure is not getting any less here for Calgary. So much of this is perspective. And with Elias Lindholm's comment, he's like, we played 46 games and we haven't played a one great game yet. You know how I would look at that? It's still out there to come. The best is still to come for the Calgary Flames. But, yeah, and with Markstrom... Was it seven years, six million per year is what they've signed the goalie to? Why did they give him that contract? Because they've seen how good he could be. He's a Vezina candidate. So they have a mental strength coach. I know him. I've had lunch with him at the Gray Eagle. They got Kelly Rudy sitting there on staff. They just got to work with the goalie's head. And I think they'll be fine. Uh, one last note. I was invited by the Ottawa Red with you, Jeff Reinbold, coming in next. Uh, and you'll be back later. The Ottawa Red Blacks invited me to watch their Defend the R documentary last night on YouTube. Very good. Uh, NFL caliber, as I told them. And they went deep into the Jeremiah Masoli garrett Marino incident where the Saskatchewan defensive lineman took out the legs of the Ottawa quarterback, ended his season. How's that guy not in jail, by the way? But it was, it was a fantastic job of the documentary. And I'm wondering, by the way, Joshua O'Connor is the kid from the Red Blacks who invited me. He's video producer for the Red Blacks. How much of the Montreal Alouettes ownership situation are you following? Because I'm kind of had it with Gary Stern, just so you know. Um, he didn't go after our man J.C. Abbott on Twitter from 3downnation.com, the number one publication for Canadian football news. But he's reporting a bit on what a dumpster fire the Alouettes organization is. And Gary Stern wrote him. For now, one of the owners of the Alouettes and said, I'm surprised at you, JC. I'll leave it at that. Somebody came at me like that as an owner, I'd rip his throat out. How much are you following it? I'm following it. It's definitely a story. And I don't think... What do you know? We haven't heard the last of it. It's not a lot. That's the thing. Not a lot. But we just know what we're, what we're you know, told. And what's out publicly and the breadcrumbs that have been left and they're not good so if the breadcrumbs aren't good then really when you pull back the curtain i wonder what is the situation really is so i'm sure over the next what are the breadcrumbs weeks and months what are the breadcrumbs i don't, I don't even know that what are the bread what are the breadcrumbs that the, the 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 back and forth with jc on twitter just little things that we're seeing from gary stern and it's just you know the signs aren't good and I think we're going to, the JCs, the newsmakers, the Farhands, the Dave Naylors, we're going to start to pull behind the curtain of this ownership situation leading up to next season. Okay. I, I'm just saying, if an owner came at me like Gary Stern did with JC, and he says, I'm surprised at you, the reporter, I would say, how about we talk about your own backyard, Gary? Let's talk about that. I can't stand guys like that, man. Not anymore. Not anymore. Moose, I'll see you in overtime, okay? You bet. Whew. Woosa. We'll talk NFL when we come back with Jeff Reinbold from Sky Sports. It's the RP Show on Game Plus TV, YouTube Live, and on the radio, Metro Atlanta, WQEE 99.1 FM. Head to YouTube.com slash The Rod Peterson Show now. You got to subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed.
Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG, always delivering the best fan experience. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital Ford Lincoln. Great news, factory credits are back. That means massive savings on every new vehicle. Take advantage of up to $7,000 in discounts on all remaining new 2022 F-150s. And rates are as low as 1.99% OAC. Looking for a used vehicle? You gotta check out our all makes, all models inventory. Plus, don't pay for 90 days on all new and used vehicles. There's never been a better time to trade and upgrade at Capital Ford Lincoln. CapitalFordLincoln.com. Dark Horse Bets today. I gotta hit the beat. Is it time to take your event online? Bring it to IKS Live. We've got a fully customized virtual event platform with remote guest support for your next fundraiser, talk show, conference, performance, and more. IKS Live offers live streaming to Facebook Live and YouTube and pre-recorded capabilities, both in our studio with green screen available and on location with pre-production and post-production services. Visit us at ikslive.ca. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Laid back and kicking it. Let's head back to the studio. Here's Rob. Your favorite daytime sports talk show continues live on Game Plus TV, WQEE Radio in Metro Atlanta, and of course, live streaming on YouTube. I hope you're ready for some fun. It's always fun, but this guy screams fun. And winning, Jeff Reinbold, currently NFL analyst at Sky Sports, director of player development. University of Hawaii, veteran of 32 pro football seasons, and the host of the Jeff Reinbold Show, which you had a very big guest. I'm going to talk about with you, Coach, in a second. I'm a big fan of Dick Vermeil. How you doing, sir? Mahalo. Oh, we Hello? lost the audio, Clark, or is it me? Oh, we got you now. We got you now. Okay. All right. Okay, Coach. Yeah, you're good. Listen, I'm going to jump into it right now. Thousands upon okay. thousands of views for your interview with, with, with Coach Vermeil. What is your deal with Coach Vermeil? Where's the connection there? And, uh, uh, yeah. You know, this is... What's the deal? You're going to you, you're, you're gonna get me going now. You, 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 this is my guy. And I met Coach uh, for the first time. I was a young, I mean, young, young, like 25-year-old. What's happening, boys? <laughs> I was just getting into it. Okay, they tell me, stand by. He's joining us all the way from London, England, by the way, Coach Reinbold. Holy smokes. What? Okay, we, okay, we lost you. We got you back, Coach. You said you were 25 and you met him. Please continue. Yeah, I met him. He came in and did a presentation to us on coaching and... I'm 25, and 
you know, I don't know what I don't know. And I must have been like, I, I mean, I, I asked him 10 million questions. And, I, and, you know, it was one of those deals, Rod, where you were in a, in a staff meeting and I'm asking him all these questions. I, I'm looking around at the room and the faces of the other coaches are like, come on, please, can we get this over and go to lunch? But I just was like, he was a guy that I could remember taking a UCLA team that had no chance against the team that was supposed to be the best team in college football history, Ohio State undefeated, beat them in the Rose Bowl, goes to the Eagles, hadn't been in the playoffs in 30 years. He takes them to the Super Bowl. So obviously, to me, I was going to get every nugget I could get from the guy. As we were leaving, he hand me his business card and he said, you know, let me help you along the way. He said, I kind of like you. Let me help you along the way. So I we go through that season. I go off and I take a head coaching job at Rocky Mountain College, which, I mean, Rod, it is the lowest rung of the food chain in college football. I mean, we... At the mm -hmm. press conference, we didn't even have a football, right? Because the kids had stole all the equipment after the, they fired the head coach. So I asked him. He said, "He said I'll help you at any if you ever need help." So I dug his card out and I called him in Philadelphia and I said, "Coach, I'd like you to come out and guest coach and speak at our spring fundraising banquet." And he said, "Well, let me think about it." I said. I can guarantee I can take you on the best trout water in North America because he's a big hunter and fisherman, right? So he agrees to come. I go into the president's office at the school the next day, and I said, hey, uh, I got, I'm got. i thinking I'm pretty special. I said, I got Dick Vermeil to come out and speak at our spring banquet. And he looks at me, and he goes, okay, make sure you take it out of your budget. Well, I, my budget, there was no budget, right? You didn't have a budget. So luckily, yeah. <laughs> luckily, I had enough frequent flyer miles to fly him out on my frequent flyer miles. Now, this is a Hall of Fame guy, right? And he's flying coach on my frequent flyer miles from Philly. Oh, man, he's got me. <laughs> he's just, yeah, speaking of trout fishing, he's got me on the hook. So, then we anyway, him again. So, oh, yeah. Are we good? Continue. We got you. All yeah, right. we got you. So, Continue. Anyway, so he, coach comes out and he, Trout fish is like he's like he's coaching the football team. I mean, he's first guy in the water, last guy out of the water, the whole deal. But through the course of the week, now you got to understand, Rod. Like I said, this is the bottom of the bottom of the food chain in college football, and we've got kids playing from Cutbank and Shoto and all these little eight-man teams all around Montana. And there's Dick Vermeil, the guy that they see on TV every Sunday. And we go play the alumni team because we. Oh, man. Was that three times? Okay. Lo and behold. We, everybody. Yeah, continue. We, we play the alumni team. Continue. Yeah, you're in and out, but right, you play so the alumni team. We play the alumni team. They got a keg on the sideline, right? This is how low class this is, right? But these kids who had, who had not won a game the year before beat the alumni team. And after the game, they hand him the game ball. Well, he does what Coach Vermeil always does, which is he cries because he's an emotional guy. Yeah, he's a crier. And, he's a crier. And so after this was all over, I take him to the airport, and he, and he tells me, pull over. And we're halfway to the airport, and he says, pull over. And, you know, down some country road in Billings, Montana. And he looks at me, and he said, I see way too much of me in you. So I'm going to tell you, you better be careful. <sighs> I see way too much of me in you. How long before he comes back? Five, four, three, two, one. And we got him. <laughs> okay, coach, you said, I see way too much of me in you. Go. Yeah, and he said, you got to be careful, kid, because this game can eat you alive. Well, that started a friendship and a partnership that's lasted for all these years. And when he went back to the Rams, I had just gotten the job, the head job in Winnipeg. And he asked me to go to the Rams with him. And I said, Coach, I can't do that to these people because I just accepted this job. 
and but yet we stayed in contact. He's a he's a he's been the biggest male influence in my life, other than my father. Uh, he is a guy that <clears throat> that I love, and uh, you know, he's right. There is a there is way too much of him in me, I guess. You know, you should have went to St. Louis. You know that, Coach. You know that now. I, you if know, you had to do it, it all looking, over again. Looking back on it, yeah, you'd say that was obviously something that you had to do. But you got to understand, too, you remember where we were at the CFL at that time, Rod. We didn't know if we were going to have a job next week. And that organization gave me a chance as a young guy, probably because nobody else wanted the job. But I got the job. And I just felt like it would be the absolute wrong thing to do to turn my back on them before we ever even had a chance. Now, they may look back on those two years and say I should have gone to St. Louis too, but you know, you, you do what you think is the right thing at the time, and I don't yeah. regret it, but certainly it changed the trajectory of, of my career, certainly. Sure. Well, those are the scars we wear, right? Uh, tr uh, Ryan and Toronto says, this is incredible. A cliffhanger at the end of every sentence. <laughs> Jeff Reinbold is amazing. <laughs> I'm like, yes, he is. And I actually thought we'd bring him on to talk NFL today. In a way, we did. Uh, shoot, coach, I didn't even know about that St. Louis thing, man. It won a Super Bowl. Speaking of, we should get on track here with the games. Yeah. Were you six for six last weekend like I was on Super Wild Card? I have, absolutely am, and I'm on a roll. And I tell you what, two months ago, I said I thought the San Francisco 49ers would win the Super Bowl. And I think I still believe that, although, you know, we're at the Elite Eight right now, Rod, and, you know, there are going to be some great games, obviously, in this in this weekend, but I still believe that the 49ers are the best best team in football right now. Ah, uh, Bet Regal. You know I'm a Cowboys fan. Um, Bet Regal has the Niners favored by four at home. Let me ask you this. When you are making your picks, how much do you go by analytics and numbers? I was saying earlier, Tom Brady never lost to Dallas. He was 7-0. and oh, They were at home. But if you went by that, you would think the Bucks would win. And no, Dallas was a better team. No, I stay feel, away from that. What do you use? Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I use analytics marginally. What I really depend on is my experience as a football coach and watching teams play and looking at things. I thought there were some incredible, incredible performances on the, this past weekend. And maybe the, the biggest one from a team standpoint, I'm not talking about individual performance, I'm talking about a team standpoint, was what the Giants coaching staff did to win that game in Minnesota because they went in there and expanded the role of Daniel Jones, right? Against, and I understand that the Minnesota's not a very good defense. I get all that, right? But they expanded his role and took advantage of what he can do. Then on the defensive side, Wink Martindale went totally against the, his history. I, I've known Wink for a long, long time, and I consider him a friend, and he has never met a blitz that he doesn't like. And I thought they would go in there... The last time he played Minnesota, they hit Kirk Cousins 11 times and sacked him four more. So I thought, okay, he's going to go in and pressure him. But he didn't because he knew he couldn't match up. Even though Dory Jackson was back, he couldn't match up outside with Jefferson. And Jefferson ripped them the last time they played. So what did he do? He went completely against his own belief system which is pressure, and said, no, I'm going to play coverage over Jefferson. So the entire game, Jefferson never got a one-on-one, -on -one, not one. I went back and looked at the film. And so do you realize how hard that is for a coach to do that in a pressure situation? You know, there's a belief in coaching that when you compare yourself to the other coordinator or you look at the other staff, that in, especially under pressure, we all as human beings revert back to what we're comfortable with or what we know. Wink went completely outside the box and said, no, I'm going to play pressure. I mean, excuse me, I'm going to play coverage. Justin Jefferson had less than seven yards a touch in that game. 
And that is a phenomenal coaching job because he does he didn't have Jair Alexander that can just track him and mark him all over the field. He had to do it another way. And I thought that was, you know, nobody talks about it because you don't look at the game. You know, there's opinion and then there's analysts. Opinion guys like Stephen A. Smith and those guys, they're just giving you what they think or trying to get you to to, you know, take a to jump at, at their outrageous comment. Analysts look at the game, and when I looked at the game, that's what I saw. Hey, well, yeah, well, you know, that's where I live with the sound bites uh, to my peril ah. sometimes, but that's what, pe that's what people like. And they're, what? What do you say? You were going to jump in? No, there. I, I'm just, I, I, there's nothing wrong with living in that area because I, <laughs> I live in that area too, but I also want to make sure <laughs> that I, I when when I see something that is really well done, and another one was what Kellen Moore did with the Cowboys, Rod. Do you realize that, mm -hmm. you know, his quarterback had been struggling, had more turnovers than any quarterback in, in football, right, and played five less games, right? And he's in the playoffs. And what did he do? He said, I'm not going to rely on Z Dak's ability to – push the ball down the field and go to C.D. Lamb, although C.D. Lamb's my best player on tape or on, on in paper. When you look at the touches, there were there were 12 touches between the tight ends and the running backs in that game. So he put the game yeah. on Dalton Schultz and Pollard and and yeah, they got a couple completions to C.D. and they got one to two or, or two to, to Hilton, but he made it easier for his quarterback who was struggling and i thought that was again a great job of coaching by kellen moore uh, coach would you mind sitting through a four minute break and we'll talk about this weekend's games you got time to do that absolutely love to rod all right great appreciate you jeff reinbold joining us from sky sports uh across the pond we'll be right back and we'll take a look at this weekend's divisional games i know he's not going to give us his picks yet but he'll break it down it's the RP Show on Game Plus TV, live streaming on YouTube, and of course on the radio, WQEE 99.1 FM. Head to YouTube.com slash The Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. bets today I gotta hit the beat. bronco plumbing heating and cooling experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving regina and area since 1978 bronco plumbing heating and cooling we'll treat you right does this look familiar your fans deserve an incredible arena experience it's time for an upgrade 
Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. BDG, always delivering the best fan experience. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC. Great news, factory credits are back. That means massive savings on every new vehicle. We have over 100 GMC Sierras available and they're all priced to move. Looking for a used vehicle? You gotta check out our all makes, all models, GM certified pre-owned inventory. Plus, don't pay for 90 days on all new and used vehicles. There's never been a better time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC. CapitalGMC.ca. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Oh, yeah, he's back. Time for more of the Rod Peterson Show. It is, and uh, having so much fun with Coach Reinbold, by the way, from Sky Sports, joining us from Europe. David's watching on Game Plus TV in Winnipeg. He says, I remember when Coach Reinbold rode into town on his Harley. <laughs> Tough times in the peg after Cal Murphy. I'm happy to see he remains firmly on his feet. Enjoy all the success you have earned and deserve. That's from David in Winnipeg, Coach. Uh, that is an era that will never be forgotten. But we'll jump into the NFL. I don't want to get sidetracked. Saturday, right. AFC Divisional Game, Jacksonville. As you know, at Kansas City, the Chiefs are favored by eight and a half. Forget about the line. Who wins, Coach, in your mind? Well, I, th I think, you know, uh, it's it's going to be closer than eight and a half, but I I think the Chiefs will win. When you give Andy Reid an extra week to prepare, uh, which they've had because they got to buy. Number one, his football team's going to be healthier. Number two, uh, they're at home. Number three, it gives him one of the most creative minds in in football at any level anywhere. Another week to prepare against you. I think that's an unfair advantage. The Jaguars have got to really feel good about where they're going. They've got a young football team. Doug Peterson has done a masterful job with them. But I think this is going to be where, you know, they kind of run out of run out of steam because Kansas City, while, you know, their defense has gotten better, they've got Chris Jones, who's maybe the best inside pass rusher in football. They can play man-to-man -man in the back end. They're good in the kicking game. I just think they're a better football team at home. You have to take Kansas City. Giants, Eagles, uh, Eagles by seven and a half, the NFC champs. Uh, what do you see in there? Wow. This one is fascinating to me because <laughs> Brian Dable with the Giants has taken a team. And I, I know this for a fact that he, this, this Giants team was worse off than the Bills were when, you know, they all went in there. He went in there with Sean McDermott a couple years ago in, in Buffalo. Now, you look at how he's done such a masterful job with a guy that, frankly, last year, you know, Daniel Jones was a, he was a soundbite. He was a, he was a video clip running down the field, nobody around him, and he falls down on what should have been a touchdown. And, you know, that was kind of what he was, Oh, we lost him. You know what it is? He's getting hold messages it, it. coming in. We got you, know, you now. Yeah. We got you now. Yeah, Daniel think, Jones is a different player. Yeah. <laughs> oh, di totally different player. I mean, he's he's now taking advantage of what he has, which is athleticism. He's got a big enough arm. He can throw the ball, yes. And, uh, you know, they're, they're better. You know, their sum is far better than their parts on offense. They're very average, you know, in terms of, you know, you look at them outside at wide receiver, there's not a bunch of those guys you'd say, I want to trade for. Um, Saquon Barkley is extremely talented. On the other side of the ball, Philadelphia, you know, where will Hurts be, you know, with a with another week? I know he's not on listed on the injury list anymore, but that just, that doesn't really mean all that much. 
how how healthy is that shoulder? Will he be able to take hits? Um, how much are they going to expose him to hits? You know, when they were really going great on offense, you know, he was absolutely the focal point of that offense. Now, they've got A.J. Brown. They've got Miles Sanders. You know, they've got a really good offensive line, although Lane Johnson's not going to play at right tackle. Um, I think that the, the defense of the Eagles is the edge, and I think their ability to send multiple pass rushers you know, their defensive line is outstanding. Rod, if the Giants can stay ahead of the chains, if they can keep Daniel Jones in manageable situations, then they have a chance. If it gets to third and long a bunch of the time, I think that's really a disadvantage to the Giants because Neil, their their rookie right tackle, has really struggled. And I mean really struggled. You know how when you went to the ice cream store when you're a kid, and they gave you a ticket and it said, okay, serving customer number one. Well, that's yeah. what it'll be like for the def- that that's what it'll be like for the defensive lineman from Philadelphia if it gets to third and ten. They'll all be trying to get that ticket that says they get to rush against Neil, because he has struggled in pass rush. So I, I think it's gonna be an interesting battle. The Giants, I think, will keep it closer than people think. All the pressure is on Philadelphia. All of it. The expectations of the Philadelphia fans, all of it. Uh, We have four minutes, so two minutes per game. Cincinnati at Buffalo, uh, Bills by five and a half. What are you liking that one? Well, I think the Bills will win the game. Going to come down to who protects their quarterback the best. Uh, Cincinnati's offense was marginal last week against a good Baltimore defense. They were opportunistic on defense. You can't rely on 98-yard you know, fumble returns to, to win football games very much, especially in the playoffs. Uh, you know, I, I worry a little bit sometimes about Josh Allen's, you know, he, he'll make some disaster plays too. But, you know, big game, Dave, Gabe Davis. Uh, you've got St- Stephon Diggs, who's an outstanding player. And Cole Beasley now is, is we saw what he brings to an offense. I'm going to take the Bills in a very good football game. And the Dallas and, Cowboys at San Francisco, you kind of uh, took your hand is, on this earlier. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, okay. And, and the reason I say this, Rod, is when can you? When have you ever seen a team that has arguably the best tailback in the league, the best tight end in the league, certainly the best left tackle in the league, um, you know, you look at the best fullback in the league, two really outstanding receivers in, in Ayuk and Debo Samuel who really block well. This football team does all the little things well, right? And that, to me, is is the mark. Now, as long as Shanahan doesn't try and be the smartest guy in the room, because when I was doing the game this past Sunday, I said that at halftime. I said, you know, Shanahan has to just get away from trying to trick everybody and get the ball in 23's hands and and let your team go out and win. And Seattle, you know, kept it close for a half. But San Francisco is so good. And we haven't even talked about a defense. You got the best pass rusher in the league. You got two great linebackers. You got a great safety. This is a a really, really good football team, and they're playing at home. For Dallas, Dallas has got to have Parsons wreck the game. He's got to be, and I think he can do this, He's got to make a huge play or two, whether that's a strip sack fumble, whether that's an interception, some way they need him to perform and, you know, as well as he can perform. I've been impressed with Dan Quinn and what he's done with that defense. They were a mess a few years ago, and he's really he's really simplified it, and those guys play fast and play hard. Um, I like Pollard. I think he's a great player. Uh, obviously, Dalton Schultz, we saw what he did last week. They're, they're, I'm a little concerned about the Cowboys' health up front. And remember last week, or last year, Rod, and everybody talks about the history between these two teams. I won't go any farther back than last year when San Francisco came into Dallas and just said, we are going to punch you in the face, and we're going to keep punching you in the face to see if your, fir- if your chin is firm enough. And it wasn't. Now, this is a different Cowboy team. They're better in the offensive line than they were last year. But I think it's going to come down to that again. I think it's going to be a great game. Another one of the classics between these two. But I think San Francisco's talent will win out in the end. 
Well said. Uh, Cowboys haven't forgotten it. I saw somewhere this is the ninth all-time playoff meeting between the two. It, it feels like there's more, but it's not the CFL. There's a lot more teams, right? Um, Four-point line, they're predicting this to be the closest game. It might be the best game. Coach, thanks for this. Hey, where can folks uh, follow your stuff before I let you go? Just uh, you go to the Jeff Reinbold Show on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, all those things. And let's do this all, all the way through the Super Bowl, right? Because I'll be in Phoenix for the game and do the game. I know you'll probably be down there too. So let's let's continue this through the through uh, through the playoffs because I certainly love having an opportunity to You're talk on. to you. I'm a big fan of Rob Peterson. And we're big fans of Coach Reinbold here too, of course. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, let's do it. We'll make a date. Okay. And he gone. He gone. We'll be right back with overtime when the Moose will rejoin, okay? Maybe a sports update, too. Did I do one? I don't think I did. It's the RP Show on Game Plus TV, YouTube, and 99.1 WQEE. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to YouTube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Your phone and text RP, that's Rod Peterson. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes to our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. Dark Horse Bets today. I gotta hit the beat. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Easy snacking all around. Something everyone can love. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC. Great news, factory credits are back. That means massive savings on every new vehicle. We have over 100 GMC Sierras available, and they're all priced to move. Looking for a used vehicle? You've got to check out our all-makes, all-models, GM-certified pre-owned inventory. Plus, don't pay for 90 days on all new and used vehicles. There's never been a better time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC. CapitalGMC.ca
You got something to say? You want to add to the show? What are you waiting for? Don't just sit there. Say something. Now, back to the studio with Rod. Okay, everybody, we are back, and uh, I'm live, believe it or not, but we don't have the moose, I just found out, so I feel like it's going to be you and me until he joins, if he joins us at all. Uh, my mind is swimming in a good way with the interview with Coach Reinbold um, and Nathan Rourke and Tara Sloan from earlier. I will dabble for a second in the viewer audience questions, listener questions. Corey from Radville, home of the Nationals, writing in. It's a small town in Saskatchewan. I've been there many times. Uh, Corey was roasting Arizona as a hockey market earlier, and I said maybe you should go there. <laughs> Corey writes in and says, Rod, I've been to games there. They can't get fans. You're sounding like a Milestone Flyers fan. Okay, we got the moose. Let's bring the moose in. We have found Radville's John Kirby. We found him. <laughs> His uh, name's Corey. Okay. All right, Moose. Now, um, what a great day. I've barely seen you. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about Reinbold's NFL predictions this weekend. I don't know how I feel about it. Um, I'm going through the, for Bet Regal, I'm not putting the robe on right now, but when I make my weekend picks, I very deftly saved them, Darren, uh, for the whole show. Yeah. You don't, no deal. Moose, no deal here for Bet Regal. Chiefs by eight and a half over Kansas City. You're saying the Jags will at least beat that. Reinbold agreed. Giants at Eagles, Eagles by seven and a half. You said no deal. These are all the betting lines from Bet Regal. Cincinnati at Buffalo, Bills by five and a half. You said no deal. And the 49ers, four-point favorites at home over the Dallas Cowboys. And they are, you took that deal. Do you think the 49ers will win? Uh, how excited are you going into this weekend? Are you one of those, you're not one of those guys that your team's out, so you're not following it, right? No, I'm not. I'm very much into it. And I can find storylines to attach me to the game and get me into this to watch. So I'm very much, I'm very much into it. Absolutely. Dave from Niagara Falls, Ontario, watching on Game Plus TV, says, Argos, thanks for all the CFL talk. You're welcome, bud. The one thing when I said, now here's Ryan on radio, another great show. Ryan, by now, since the guy uh, runs WQEE down there in Metro Atlanta, he knows my deal. We've been on there since September the 2nd that I'm a certified mental health addiction recovery coach, grief, trauma, stress. When Ryan Bold said, I don't know how much you were following that interview, but I knew there was something there between him and Dick Vermeil, the Super Bowl winning coach of the St. Louis Rams, and featured in the movie Invincible. Did you watch Invincible yeah. on Vince oh, Papali? Yeah, I love that show. yeah, that's the coach. Yeah. And Vermeil said to Ryan Bold, when, what was it, in the 70s? Probably the 70s. He goes, I see so much in you, you, of me and you, kid. I feel sorry for you. Now that I'm dealing with these people in the, that I coach that you know, you don't know who they are, but they're people in sports. That's all I work with. Athletes, coaches, sports people, military, and entertainers. And I, they tell me their problems. I'm like, ah, you poor. It's exactly me. And it's not all substances or alcohol. It's just the way their mind races, you know. The way, stress and anxiety and all that. I'm like, oh, at least I know the way out now. I just, that's what rang in my mind when Ryan Bold was saying it. And it's, I guess that's why God puts you through these things so you can help others years down the line. That's what I thought out of the Ryan Bold thing. Um, what were your takeaways from the show, by the way? Oh boy, there's a lot. You know, we go back, it was a, it felt, felt like a lot of CFL, NFL, a lot of football talk today, obviously with, uh, with Nathan and then with Jeff, but you know, to me, I'm starting, I've been thinking a lot about the Bedard thing, actually. That's, to me, yeah. you know, I've talked to probably about that the most. Which market I'd like to see him go to? You know, which market kind of deserves a little good fortune because they've had such bad fortune? And the more you talk about Vancouver, do they deserve good fortune or have they created a lot of this bad fortune themselves from mismanagement and bad choices? Or has it been bad luck? 
think it's a little bit of both, but Arizona's definitely not had anything go their way, and San Jose has a little bit. Columbus really hasn't. So there's a few options out there. Oh, man, there's so many things I'll take away. Uh, Wayne in Victoria, B.C. says, by the way, this was an absolute bomb of a show today. It went by so fast. It's hard to believe. Thank you, Wayne. Um, I think about what Nathan Rourke said about getting handed the ball to start his first CFL game. You remember it, week one, shortened season, 2021, B.C. Lions at Sask, and the all week long the Lions had said they were going to start Mike Riley, and all of a sudden, boop, Hand the ball to Nathan Rourke, this Canadian kid. At the time, 22, never started a game. Almost, as I recall, led the Lions to victory that day. And as I said to him at the, in the interview here, and God was preparing you then for where you're at now, right? Those hot potato situations. And he went out and he handled it. And I really wonder where the sky is for Nathan Rourke. He's, he seems to have something going for him. Would you not agree? <laughs> yeah, he really does. He has <clears throat> the work ethic. He has the mindset. He has a lot of things, a lot of those tools. And so I'm really excited to see how he handles this next chapter and the National Football League because I think he's in a good spot. I love that he's just up the road in Jacksonville. I can jump <laughs> in the car and go see him. Um, and on the Arizona thing, Last minute of play in the RP show today. Said it a million times, so say it a million and one. Everybody wonders why there's still a team there. They're never going to get it. And I, I let it go, let it go, Rod. They're not going to get it. They have an owner there, I believe his name is Morello, who will never run out of money. Never run out of money. He's printing it out there. And I'm not saying he's a counterfeiter. Um, as I was told, somebody told me in the NHL that... 51% of every dollar spent on gambling in Arizona goes to this guy. He doesn't care whether his team ever wins or not. And that's the kind of owner the commissioners want. Doesn't matter whether they win or not. They're never going to go broke. They don't care. You know, yep. they're in it for a hobby. Yeah, that's the way sports is now. All right, Moose. Great job, man. I'll see you tomorrow. Stay warm. Later. See the rest of you tomorrow, noon Eastern, here on Game Plus. You screwed up, Clark! <clears throat> Sold! I like it! How about that?